Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Okay, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to Bucknell basketball with John Griffin with Holy Cross next on the road in Worcester and then Army coming up uh, on Sunday. John, first of all, welcome to the show, uh, especially uh, thanks for joining us after what had to be, a, obviously, a couple of close games, but a tough week. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, of course. Always uh, happy to be on with you and appreciative that you uh, continue to, to let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoy the conversation. I learn a lot when it's all said and done. Uh, John, John Griffin, the player, was a yeah. real competitor. In fact, uh, Pat Flannery was on the trip to Nebraska with us over the weekend, and your name came up, and in glowing terms, by the way. Yeah. But you are a real competitor. How much does that translate to your coaching? And sometimes does John Griffin, the coach, have to temper John a little bit John uh, Griffin, the competitor, in certain moments because you have to deal with young people? Uh, I mean, sir, early in my career, that was probably more of the case, uh, just being that you're young and you're fiery and, um, you know, every every moment of every day seemingly is important uh, at that stage uh, in life and coaching. Right now, no, I mean, I view, of course, I'm competitive. Uh, I have a staff of competitors as well. <laughs> Yep. And so uh, we, we kind of lead um, with our competitive attitudes uh, as opposed maybe to, you know, treating every situation uh, like it has to be perfect, I guess. So uh, I think that what we try to do, what I try to do is, is teach uh, what competitiveness really entails. Uh, a lot of times it can get lost in uh, this idea of playing hard, but competing is is really doing everything in your in your power and your willpower to uh, win <laughs> more or less yeah. so uh, and that just means that you have to take every moment separately and treat every moment at its own and you have to try to win every single situation so that's that 's my role right now. Um, I can tell you that my players would tell you that I'm very competitive uh, and that I preach competitiveness pretty regularly, but I also live my life in a competitive nature. Uh, and I think attitude reflects leadership. So I try to be mm -hmm. consistent, uh, but also be fair because uh, as uh, you mentioned, Pat Flannery, his, his mentorship has been so impactful in my life, but as a, you know, both player and coach as it relates to being a, a coach, he's always often, often telling me, you know, not everyone is, is you. Uh, and, you know, so you're trying to do your part in teaching uh, your players how to compete, um, you know, in every situation. And so uh, I've tempered that over the years. And uh, at the same time, I want to make sure that the group understands what it means to compete because the, you can you can kind of yell until you're blue in the face. If no one really understands, you know, what you're teaching them, then it's not going to be as applicable. Well, and that's something that we've talked about before. It doesn't matter what you know. It matters what they know. So when it comes time to talk to them about what's coming up or how to approach it, how do you approach it with your group? Because, again, it matters on what, in the end, what they know. Yeah, I mean, that is a question that internally we're constantly trying to answer. What's the most effective and efficient way uh, to teach so that the group that you have is not only confident in one another and confident in what they know, um, but also, you know, very comfortable <laughs> so that yes. they, yeah. in the heat of the moment, uh, can rely on their instincts, the instincts that we've tried to teach uh, since we've been hired. Um, and just be a basketball player. I, I often speak about this idea of, of being a basketball player, and it's a pretty general idea, but uh, essentially what you're trying to do is teach a group of young people to react to situations, make decisions that would help your team be successful real time, in the moment, with referees, with an opponent that's doing the same thing you're doing. Um, and a lot of times your opponent's going to do something that you – didn't prepare for in that situation so uh you know you just have to be a basketball player and uh a lot of that 
uh, the idea of that really comes down to how well we teach as a staff that, like I said, your players just are completely understanding what you're trying to accomplish on both offense and defense. You have people now logging a, a fair amount of minutes for you. You're in mid-February. How are you tailoring practices right now because of that? Well, I'm, I'm probably doing uh, – we're doing a lot of teaching. You know, and so uh, we'll go 90 minutes instead of what used to be maybe early January, mid January, more uh, four minute games, 10 minute segments of competition. We've shortened that uh, window of time, and now we're we're really making sure that everybody that um, is playing, we because of injuries, we have guys playing different positions. Everyone that's playing in these different positions just knows where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, <laughs> because that yeah, right. organization is a big part of it. I do have to ask you, you have been a part of a program at Bucknell that set the standard in the Patriot League. You're in the process of getting Bucknell back where they're setting the standard in the Patriot League. But right now at the moment, it's been Colgate that has done that. In the end, what impresses what impressed you in facing them this year that is something that down the road Bucknell will be able to do? Um, they're poised. I mean, so what you have, what Matt Langle has built right now is a program that is got that has been blessed with continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't had anybody transfer out, so that certainly helped. They have had um, in the last six, seven years, really high level individual playmaking ability from their guard positions. Um, but their experience has set an expectation level as to essentially what type of offense and what type of possessions they want to have and they don't get rattled i mean you can see it it's very evident when you watch them play when we played Mm -hmm. them twice now um you know you can throw a, a slew of different schemes their way And based on experience and continuity, they seem to react accordingly. Their decisions are very sound. They don't turn it over. And ultimately, they, what I would say, is get what they want to get on both sides of the floor, and it's impressive. Okay, your team. Uh, And we talked about the minutes being logged uh, to this point. You got, you got to go on the road once. You got to go to, you got to go to Holy Cross uh, to get get up there. And this does go back to, like, it's interesting because the legs part of it, because you guys have to bus. And it's a fact of life. I understand that. I mean, you do have to go through the fact of life part. Uh, But what's your thought on on Holy Cross and how they're playing at this point? They're playing good basketball. Everyone at this point right now really is, uh, the Patriot League is unique. I mean, it's probably one of the unique conferences around the country and that there's so much parity. Aside from Colgate, who plays tonight, they could clinch first place in the regular season. Everyone else is pretty close in standings from top to bottom. So they're playing good basketball. But you know what, Steve? Like at this point in the year, it's and I preach this pretty regularly. This is it, our success will be dependent upon what we do as a team, not necessarily right. our opponents. Right. So uh, you know, the legs are a factor for sure. I mean, Jack Forrest is number one in our conference in minutes played, and Elvin Edmonds is number two. Yeah. And a big reason for that has just been injuries, quite frankly. And so uh, hopefully, you know, we'll we'll be a little bit more complete as we get here down the stretch. Um, but it's certainly put a lot of uh, a lot of mileage on on some of our guys. Yeah, and I mean, you're you're down to the final four of the regular season before the Patriot tournament starts along the way, uh, and that's going to be you know that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But you're also at a point where you, you know you play Holy Cross. You played them on January third, right? I mean, how different are they then compared to now? Because that was weeks ago. Yeah, I mean they're they're still doing some of the same things, but their uh, their lineups have changed a little bit, and some of their offensive schemes have changed a bit. But um, you know, like I said, you know, at this point in the year, with our particular group having lost a couple in a row and. You know, our, our group's playing very hard. They're maxing out, I think, uh, physically uh, right now, and, and I'm very appreciative for it. So in order to do my part, I have to make sure that they are completely organized and confident in themselves, regardless of our opponent, because that's going to be the, the key contributor to some, some world of success here as we uh, 
head into these last four games. I mean, this is going to be a tough road trip, like you said, facts of life. But you guys played Nebraska. Penn State flies Nebraska. <laughs> We're going to – it's shorter for you to get to Nebraska than it will be for us to bust exactly. Worcester. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, it's funny because we, uh, Dick Girardi and I were talking about this. Penn State bust – to Rutgers and then bust back and because it was an 8.30 game got back at 4, 4.30 in the morning and that's a fact of life for you sometimes as you, as, you know, I'm not telling you anything that was a tougher trip than the Nebraska trip I mean, yeah. that, it's yeah. just, that's just a fact of life uh, and that, you know, that's why I asked you about legs this time of the year, what do you do with practices what about, I, I don't think I use the term mental reps but the number of mental reps you have to take yeah, we try to watch as much film as possible so that we can keep our players off their feet. But I think our attitude as a staff will contribute to the energy levels of our players. And this, it, for us, anyway, going to Holy Cross, we just take it for what it is. Uh, you know, we don't com- complain about it. And uh, we have a mentality of no excuses. We put our hard hats on and go. But it is a tough trip, and we've already made one before. Uh, we yeah. we actually bust to Boston mid, midweek during school, which is unique. Student athletes at Bucknell, I mean, it's a challenge. So we got home at 5 a.m. Uh, last time we did a midweek trip, and uh, the Patriot League, has never done this before, so I think this is. Uh, I just think it's a little bit unhealthy. But then they have to go to class the next day, and uh, that's just the model that we have in place. And and our and our players know that, but it's certainly challenging to to go six and a half to Worcester, play a game, bust it back, and go right to class. All right, what do you say that you get a sweep this week, and we talk on Monday? Ha! <laughs> One day at a time around here, Steve. One day at a time. But yeah, yeah. that would be nice. I, I, Yes. Well, my idea is that you take your one day, you win, then you go to the next day, and you win that. So I'll, <laughs> that's, that's I'll I'm take doing. that. Hey, you know what? Yeah. You said it. You okay. said it. Let's do it. Thanks, John. Appreciate you, my All right. friend. All right. Thanks. All right. John Griffin, hey, basketball coach at Bucknell. All right. We'll come back.